There has been some big changes on the Etsy platform this year and the biggest one by far is the recent changes in the search algorithm that was announced last month in September by the Etsy team. So what are those SEO changes and what does it mean for your handmade shop? Let's dive in. When it comes to Etsy SEO, one thing is for sure, it always comes with some speculation, some forum talks, some rumors, and really that's not what we want to do here. We finally have some clarity because we finally have an official statement and a brand new shiny SEO guide from the Etsy team themselves. So we're not going to speculate, I'm not going to dive into some crazy SEO strategies. I really want to take the time though with you to understand what really changed and what really is going on with Etsy SEO these days. And to do that, I wanna review five very important points. The first one is CSR or context specific ranking. Now we knew that before September, before the announcement in September, but it's still important to understand what it is and to note that Etsy now uses a technology called CSR or context specific ranking. And in plain English, it means that Etsy tracks and analyzes shoppers' behavior on the platform and that the results they will display for each shopper or for each visitor will be different. So if you type in minimalist bracelet on Etsy and I type it the same keyword on Etsy search and we compare our result pages, we take a screenshot and we compare to see what's going on, this would actually look very different. And that's because Etsy with the CSR technology is able to know what I'm most likely to click on, what I'm most likely to like and to purchase, most importantly purchase really, and same for you. And so they are going to display different results to each of us so that we can see things that we're most likely to actually purchase. So there is no such thing as ranking number one because everyone has a different number one result for each keyword search. Number two is the focus on long tail keyword. Now I wanna put this graphic on the screen for a second and it's actually a graphic that is part of the Etsy SEO guide on their website. And what this represents really is the search volume on the vertical axis and the conversion rate on the horizontal axis for a given keyword. And the part of that arrow of that graphic that's orange are long tail keywords. Long tail keywords don't get as much volume as general keywords, but they get a much higher conversion rate. So in plain English, people don't look for these keywords as often, but when they look for them, they're more likely to purchase. And that's really what we want. And again, that's something that we knew before the announcement that Etsy made in September, but now they've really officialized it by saying that you should focus on long tail keyword. Now, what is a long tail keyword? Well, a general keyword would be, for example, baby gift. Now, a long tail keyword would be baby romper dinosaurs. And the reason why baby romper dinosaurs is a better fit is that although not as many people are going to look for this specific keyword, people who are searching for something like baby romper dinosaurs are much more likely to buy because they know exactly what they're looking for. If you think about how someone wanting to purchase a baby gift might behave on the Etsy platform, the first thing they might type into the search as a keyword will be probably a more general broad keyword like baby gift. That's when the visitor or the shopper is just really trying to find even just an idea of what to get as a baby gift. And then they're going to see results and they're going to notice a few rompers there and maybe think, okay, you know what? That's actually a good idea. Let's get a baby romper. And maybe they're going to start a new search with that keyword instead. And as they're browsing the results from that specific research, they start noticing a few rompers with dinos on them and they're thinking, hey, that's a great pattern. My friend Karen would absolutely love that. She would think it's so cute. This is what I want to get. And then they would type in in search baby romper dinosaurs. And so that is a much more targeted, much more specific way to search for something to purchase on Etsy. And that's why Etsy is advising you to actually focus on those keywords because it will help you rank better and also because it will help you make more sales, which in turn will help you rank better. So it's really a virtuous circle. So to sum up with the long tail keyword, less volume in search but more conversion is good and you need to add long tail keywords to your listings. 
It's good for SEO, it's good for sales, and it helps Etsy understand what it is really that your product does and what your product is so that it makes it easier for Etsy to put it in front of the right people, the people that are ready to purchase your products. Our next point is titles. Now, this is part of actually getting your listing clicked on when it shows in search because that is going to actually boost your SEO score when someone clicks on your listing because Etsy thinks, oh, this listing is working, we want to show that a bit more. And we already know that to get your listing clicked on, your images and most importantly, your feature image, your main image of your listing of your product is super important. So I'm not going to dive into the details of how to take pictures in this video, but Etsy said something else about how to get your listing clicked on that they pay attention to and recommend you pay more attention to, and it's your titles. Now, it's always been important for Etsy SEO, but what they've said is that they recommend they be short and easy to read. Now, let's break that down. Short. You can use up to 140 characters for your titles. But Etsy is pretty much saying you don't need to necessarily use all of those characters for your titles. Instead, they want you to keep in mind that those titles need to be easy to read. And there's two reasons for that. The first is mobile friendliness. Most people are not using the app to show. So they're using their mobile, they're not using their desktop, and it doesn't show the same amount of characters than on the desktop app or on the website. So you want to keep that in mind in your titles because mobile shoppers really are a big chunk of the visitors on the platform. And then the second is that you want titles that are created and written by humans for humans and not by humans for computers. And let's be honest, when you find a listing and the title is something like mug, coffee cup, large coffee cup, Valentine gift, gift for her, mug, cute mug, sarcasm mug, funny gift, coffee mug, coffee mug, 12 ounces. This isn't really human friendly. This is a human, a shop owner that's decided to put as many keywords as possible in the title so that Etsy, the computer behind Etsy, the algorithm would pick that up and score their SEO, score that listing higher. But really, it is not really human friendly. And so when Etsy is saying short and easy to read, that's part of what they mean. You want to have a title that people feel like they can click on because it resonates with what they're looking for. So be descriptive of what your product are, but don't start stuffing your title with keywords and trying to use absolutely those 140 characters. A title like set of four ceramic espresso cups, ruby red, is a good title. It's more human, it's short, it's easy to read, and it will play nicely on mobile as well. The most important being it will get you more click, which will, one more time, it's this vicious circle, help you with your SEO score for that listing. Point number four is all about the shipping. Now, this one is a touchy one and it has made a lot of makers and a lot of Etsy shop owners really quite upset. And here's what Etsy actually said. To make it easier for shoppers to find listings with competitive shipping prices, Etsy search factors shipping price into search ranking. Lowering your shipping prices makes your items more likely to rank higher in search. Fact. It is now official. If you can lower your shipping prices, it will help you rank better in the Etsy search results. Now, there are a few things you can do here, but I won't get into the details too much because I want to stay very factual with the video rather than diving into the strategy. But very quickly, here are a few things you can do. Add the shipping to your item price. Split the shipping cost between your item price and the actual shipping fee so that you can decrease the shipping fee. Set a minimum order amount, set a minimum order quantity, and finally, only allow for free shipping to local area or local orders. So that if I'm in Australia, I want to ship for free in Australia, that's fine, but I'm not going to ship for free to the US because that is just too expensive and I can't recoup the cost myself. I know it's not easy for every shop and every niche and depending on the type of products that you're selling, I know for, for those of you who are selling bigger, larger item, it might be complicated to actually decrease that shipping fee, but do try to take it into consideration because not only it helps you rank better because of the algorithm change, but it also gets you more sales, which again, that vicious circle, more sales, better conversion rate, better conversion rate, better SEO score. 
Number five, and that's the last point today, and I want to talk about renewing your item a little bit. Now, it appears that renewing your item isn't quite as useful as it might have been in the past. Etsy does say in their Etsy SEO guide that items that are new or renewed get a small temporary boost, but they also say that it might not be entirely worth it. Let me read exactly what they have to say about it. Renewed listings get a temporary boost that can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, depending on how often people are searching for a particular item. Regularly renewing your items or creating new listing just to get this small boost isn't an effective search optimization strategy. Instead, we recommend focusing your time and efforts on improving your tags or working to help increase your conversion rate. This is really a nice way of saying don't bother, the effort isn't really worth it compared to all the other points that we mentioned in this video and that they mentioned in their SEO guide that are really going to make a difference in your SEO game. Now before I let you go, there's one last thing I want to mention and then I want to give you three quick tips. The thing that I want to state before I go is that pro and premium accounts on Etsy do not get preferential treatment when it comes to SEO score. I know that's something that is being discussed widely all over the internet in forums on Reddit and on Facebook groups and it is simply not true. Etsy has confirmed that themselves and I really don't think they're lying to you. So don't fear that if you don't upgrade to a paid plan on Etsy, your item won't rank as well because it has nothing to do with it. Now, three tips. Number one, SEO is important to make sure that your item gets found, but once your item is actually displayed in the search results, you have to make sure that people click on it and that they will purchase it. So really pay attention to the quality of your product images because that is key to more sales, a better conversion rate, and a better SEO score. Number two, don't put all your eggs in the Etsy SEO basket. I know it's tempting, because it feels like it's so important and because everyone, that's all everyone seems to be talking about when you sell on Etsy, but really it isn't. It's important to pay attention to it. It's important to take note of those changes and to make adjustments if necessary, but really you want to be driving your own traffic to your store as well. My recommendation has always been and still is to use Pinterest and an email marketing strategy to do so. So I would really recommend you look into diversifying your sources of traffic so that you don't rely only on the traffic that Etsy sent you. And then my last tip is read the SEO guide. If you're watching this video, if you're selling on Etsy, if you think that Etsy SEO is important and you're about to make changes to your listings to accommodate for the new announcement that Etsy made, but you haven't read the Etsy SEO guide, I believe that it is way worth your time to actually sit down for 45 minutes, it's really not that long, and to read it from A to Z. Now, I've summed it up for you in this video, so it's better than if you didn't know anything about it. You, you definitely know more now, but I would still recommend you go and read every single thing in this guide before believing anything that you read on forum, Facebook groups, or anywhere else on the internet. It's important that you use facts, and when Etsy releases an official announcement, pay attention and take the time out of your week to actually read it. And I'll put the link to it below in the comments so that it's easy for you to access. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And just below the video, I'm putting the link to my free resource library full of guides and checklists to help you grow your handmade shop. It's completely free to access it. So make sure to check it out as well as the free Facebook group, the Tizit Circle, where myself and thousands of other makers are there to answer your question and support you in your handmade business journey. I will see you next Tuesday. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.